Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community and podcast connecting people with the products, lessons and strategies to help push their business forward. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design, just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me as always is my good buddy and co-host Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going today, Matt? It's going pretty well. It's uh, we're, we're doing two shows back to back, so it's kind of strange to uh, to do a summary again. Uh, but, how, uh, how are you again? I'm, I'm still doing pretty OK. OK, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's good to hear. Things haven't changed much since I talked to you 10 minutes ago. Yes. Awesome. And today we are joined by Christina Romero from WP Care Market, and she's going to be here talking to us quite a bit about her training courses, which I just got finished going through, and I am super excited to talk about. I've been purposefully not sharing about it too much in the group, uh, and but having to bite my tongue because I really wanted to talk about this. So I'm excited the day has finally gotten here. So Hello and good morning, Christina. Why don't you give everybody a little bit of background on yourself, introduce yourself and tell everybody how you found yourself here today. Good morning, Kyle and Matt. It's so good to be on this podcast that I listen to when I'm walking with my little uh, infant. Liar, in the liar. I'm a liar. <laughs> <laughs> just buttering up. Yeah, um, just so <laughs> yes, my name is Christina Romero. I am um, the creator of WP Care Market, I kind of created that to, to talk about care plans. Uh, it's something I love to talk about because I actually still run my web agency, which care plans became sort of core saving grace of that, <laughs> me not losing my mind. Um, so I turned around everything I learned, uh, practiced everything I was preaching, and then created um, WP Care Market training with that, where our goal is to sort of connect uh, website owners with quality web pros for quality relationships. So we have the training side of that for web pros. But a little bit of my background of when I, I have a lot of backgrounds. I have different lives. Um, we said guess. we said background, not baggage. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that changes everything. Uh, <laughs> well, I started my professional career as an actress. People kind of like hearing that. And um, when I told my husband that, when I first met him before he was my husband, he thought I meant like an extra on a movie set. So he never took me seriously until he eventually found out that I did. I was a soap opera actress for many years, nominated for two daytime Emmy awards. I got to work with Richard Gere and Claire Danes in a movie and had a really nice career as one could have as an actress because it's kind of rare to actually get a job. That's world. <laughs> um, but quickly, if anyone has ever been in like an art artistic field you kind of know like people kind of tell you when you can work um especially like in acting and writing and directing and producing and stuff and so I was like I don't want to wait for someone to tell me when I can when can be creative <laughs> or do a job so I went um to school for screenwriting funny enough and realized oh you can't make money at that either okay <laughs> and I was building websites for my professors at USC and that's when I was like, oh, well, I'm making money doing this. Let me just do this. So I started <laughs> making websites and built my own business um, off of that and then left the industry. I even remember like driving down the 405 in Los Angeles and my managers called me and said, you know, we have an audition for you. And I was like, you know what? I could spend like three, four hours driving to that audition in the Valley or I could go home and build a website for someone at the time for $500. Right. I was like, and I'm going to make a lot more money doing that. Isn't that so, crazy? <laughs> and a whole lot less traffic. And a whole lot less traffic. Exactly. And that was like the moment where I was like, wow, maybe I've got something here because I really loved it. And, um, and that was however many years ago, 10, 12 years ago. So, um, so that's my entertaining background um, and then move forward with an agency. And as you guys know, got to like learn how to do it the hard way. Which is <laughs> arguably the best way. Yeah. The best way to learn. The school of hard knocks is the best school. Oh my goodness. Like, uh, you know, that moment where I'm like crying in the kitchen with like my computer open and my husband's like, you know, things have to change. Like you can't run a business this way. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, okay, something has to change. And that's kind of, you know, the growth of it all. And really that's why I love website care plans because to me, that was my aha moment. That was the thing that sort of set me free and changed everything. As we get into it, you know, anyone who's listening will kind of understand why, what, why, what I mean by that. But, um, but truly that was the game changer. And I think why, when I started getting into these business groups and these Facebook groups, I started sharing what I had learned and saw people responding to that. And 
I would have stories, um, you know, I would, I taught like a webinar on a GoDaddy webinar one years ago. Um, it was free. It was available to everyone and it was on website care plans. And then this guy emails me afterwards and he's like, I'm a, I'm a trucker by day and I don't want to do this anymore. And I listened to your webinar and I signed three care plans up off of your webinar. That and now awesome. I think that I can awesome. like leave this and start my own business. I'm like, I want to cry. <laughs> like that was, that was like, oh my goodness. And it sounds so silly, but I'm like, I can change lives. With <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, it's absolutely true. And you know, I, <clears throat> we talk a lot about care plans on here and just recurring revenue in general, because honestly, I just cannot imagine trying to sustain a business like this off project work only mm-hmm. and the ups and downs that come with that. Yeah. How uh, stressful the only thing would that, that be? Yeah. The only thing that keeps me sane is knowing that, okay, this month I'll, ha- I'll at least have this amount of work to do and this amount of money coming in if I don't do anything else, you know? Yeah. So uh, growing that has been a big focus of my agency from the beginning. So I think one of the problems we have with care plans is a lot of us are using different language to describe them. Our industry is very spread out and people, you can do things so many different ways, right? And you can do care plans so many different ways. And, and when people ask for advice or ask questions, there's so much digging you have to do because there's no standardization in our industry yeah. really at all. Uh, people do things so much differently. And so what I'm really excited about this is there's tons of courses on everything and I'm a courseaholic and I've taken a million of them, but this is a fully fledged, here's how you can sell a care plan, create a care plan, automate a care plan, you know, teach your team how to do it, everything top to bottom on, on care plans. And I think it really creates some kind of standardization. And I definitely see this becoming kind of the standard for how these things operate. So I'm, I'm excited to talk to you about all these things today. It was very hard to, to win on my list down to just a few talking points, but we'll try to get through those. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, so there's, there's five courses, correct? Yeah. So it originally was one large course. (laughs) <laughs> that I would do like a big intake for and try to take all these people through this, this massive intensive in three weeks. And I quickly learned that di- people are at different stages in their business. Not everybody can kind of go through all the content in the same time. And also a lot of people weren't really ready for certain pieces of it. So I ended up breaking it up into five individual pieces that stood on their own. Um, so they completely stand on their own. So if you don't, if you, you, if you're hearing me talk and you're like, well, her care plans must be working because mine aren't working. So like the first piece is like the product, you know, like make, let's, let's standardize this a little bit. Let's make mm-hmm. sure we're all talking about the same thing. And if your ears looks different, maybe you're having trouble because this is why. And then the processes and some people don't want to automate their processes and just the processes or, or processes with automation. Some people don't work with a team, but um, some people are at the point where they're ready for a team. So that's that fourth piece. And then sales, everybody feels they're ready for sales. I, I'll admit, <laughs> I, I, I jumped in and had access to all of them. And the first one I went through was the selling. So uh, that's, I think that's where people naturally gravitate to. Right? <laughs> yes, exactly. I'll include in the show notes here. It's it's more than I could sit here and read off. Nobody's going to want to listen to me read all this off, but I'll include in the show notes kind of all the uh, bullet pointed list of all the lessons and modules inside the courses uh, because it'll give you a really good overview of kind of what all what all you can find in there. But there was a few parts going through the course that I want to uh, kind of expand on a little bit with you. And the first thing is is a kind of a running theme throughout all of them, I'd say. And, and that's you mentioning that care plans are really relationship building. And I think that's a huge part of the success is it's not just something you, you sell to somebody and go away. It's really about building trust and relationship and you're their, you're their guy or their girl that helps them, you know, achieve these things online. So talk to us a little bit about how you see this as more of a relationship building than, a, than just necessarily a product. Right. And it's deeper than this in the sense that if you don't want to have any type of client base, because a client base is relationship based because they're your clients, you know, they go on a client list. If you don't want to have clients, you know, maybe running an agency or working as a freelancer directly with a client isn't your thing. And, and you do feel better working in a company and having someone else navigates that client relationship. I think when, when we get into this um, running our kind of business sort of thing, we quickly learn over time through maturity that if we don't know how to navigate client relationships, it makes running a business really difficult just for project work alone and taking notes and moving through the project and launching and taking care of them. So that is just like 
the, the biggest lesson of all, I think we learn over time as we run our business. And that's why I think a lot of people duck out and they go, you know, I'm just going to go work for a company because this managing client relationships is really difficult. And that's okay. It takes certain types of personality. It takes certain types of being at a certain place in your life, you know, so there's a lot going on there. Um, when I started my agency, I didn't want client relationship. I wanted to, I, that's why I built on WordPress because like, oh, they can do this themselves. <laughs> so I'll hand you WordPress and Little you'll go you away <laughs> and you won't email me anymore. Because in my mind, I thought, you know, building a website out for a big ticket price um, was the winning thing. And then if they came back for a change, that was only going to be like 15 or $20, you know, to, to execute that small change. And I didn't want to deal with that. So uh, and this was before really we all kind of learned that when WordPress gets popular, it really does need to be updated and it does need to be backed up and monitored and all of this stuff. So as these, th as that conversation was starting to change in the WordPress environment, it was then I saw, you know, okay, this is not serving my clients <laughs> to send them away. <laughs> and so there is some revenue to be had there because, you know, I can take care of the site for them, always be on hand and, and, and build that relationship, but they need it. You know, they, they need that relationship too. So I'm not taking advantage of them in any way. So yeah. looking at it like that. Yeah. Yeah. I was just gonna say they, they really, most of my clients, I mean, their website would be trashed in a couple weeks. I mean, yes. honestly, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and most of them are happy to pay the invoice because they know everything's being taken care of and they don't have to do it, you know, and, and right. that's just right. based off of building rapport with them and then, you know, uh, gaining trust with you. Right, exactly. So if we build that relationship, they are going to turn to you for everything else because you become the expert. So when they have more project work or when they have a referral or when they want to redesign or when they have SEO needs or they have any or other Or when they want you needs. to network their computer and you're like, sorry, that's not <laughs> me. Like, yeah, that's, <laughs> no, it's outside the boundaries of what I do. Uh, yeah. So there's that. And, and, and so what I found is for clients that were never on a care plan, back years ago, they would go and find someone else to redesign their site. They wouldn't think of me. I was not top of mind. And the ones that I continually, you know, I'm in front of them, they tend to come, come back and, and we can grow their site. So it becomes more of an active relationship than just like a passive, you know, I did your site once and I kind of host it and update it from time to time. So you do want to look at it like a relationship if you want your revenue to grow um, and, and then turn their website to grow. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about requiring a care plan. So I think uh, I've benefited and, and got to the point in my business where I can be a little bit picky and choosy about the customers I want to work with, which mm -hmm. is an awesome place to get to. Not everybody yeah. is there at that point. And, and it took me a while to get to that point. Um, but I've seen one of the things people do when they kind of get there is say, okay, well, I'm only going to take on a client if, they're, if there's some kind of recurring revenue. And I thought about that um, you know, at first that was probably a good idea. I thought it was a good idea. Um, your, your course kind of made me think about this differently. And what you kind of talk about is the care plan being a gateway to your services, not necessarily yeah. something required. So why don't you require them to take on a care plan? Well, I want to know if I like them. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, certainly we, you know, we try to screen our clients for project work, um, and make sure there's someone we want to work with. But you never know how it goes. Um, so I always wanted an, an out. That was, honestly, if I was being completely honest, that was the reason why I never acquired it at the beginning. Uh, also, when we do a website evaluation, uh, so if we didn't build their site, they come, we do a website evaluation. So it's like a little mini project in a way to kind of evaluate their site. I don't require it from that either because I don't know what this un is under the hood of the site. So the bottom line is website care is always required if it's a WordPress website. So that is required. And that is a conversation you can have with your client from the very beginning. You're having a WordPress website, having someone, whether it's me or somebody else, needs to update it, needs to monitor it, and needs to keep it backed up and all that good stuff. You need to have your plugin licenses and you need to catch up to date. So that's a great conversation to have. Uh, so that the fact it needs website care is required. And we all have to be really honest with them about that. Every site, you know, whether it's hosted on Wix or whatever is paying a monthly fee of some sort to keep the platform up to date. So um, I just always want to prove that we are someone they want to have a relationship with. So if we, I'll take the website evaluation as a good example because that sort of happens within a week. 
when they're signing on to us and they're handing over money, we've never done anything for them before. We haven't delivered on time. We haven't shown any deliverables. You know, we haven't proved communi email communication that we're responsive. You know, we haven't proved anything. So really, why should I say, hey, enter a relationship with us and pay us a lot of money every month when I haven't really proved anything to them? And, so there's and always honestly, like our industry has kind of I mean, we get a bad name pretty instantly because there's so many, like all you have to have is an internet connection and you're a web developer, right? So mm -hmm. uh, there's been so many people out there that have screwed over people that people are skeptical when they come to us. Absolutely. So it's your, op it's kind of, you have to take that baggage when someone comes to you with that and acknowledge it, you know, and go, I'm sorry that other developer, you know, didn't show up we do things a little bit differently. And when you have a website care plan, you can sort of, you know, visually show them that you do stuff differently. You take care of your clients every month. That alone sets you apart. So, um, so we like to do that. We like to enter into a project before website care, uh, whether it's a mini one, you know, for that one week um, or whether it's an eight week, you know, 16 week project. And then at that point, we require a website care plan in order to engage with us after that. So they can't come back to us after we built their site and say, you know what, now we want to add on, you know, a, a new page. We want you to change this content. We want to do that. At that point, we sort of stop them and say, hey, the way that we work is you need to be on a website care plan, which we call client plans for that reason. You're a client of ours in order for us to, you know, do any work on your site. Now, of course, there are exceptions when it's a project minimum, they're coming back because they want e-commerce added on, but, and it's a certain price or whatever, and it's a project more so than, you know, small updating. But typically, almost all of our project work convert onto care plans because of that policy. And every now and again, we'll get someone who doesn't for various reasons, and I can't always go through what those reasons tend to be. Uh, and, then, and then that way, you know, when someone does leave and they want to come back to us, they know they have to get back onto the care plan for, you know, and they kind of realize, I, I think of it like a car too. If, if, if you buy your first car, you've never had a car before. You really don't know how important it is to change the oil. Like, and you really don't know like how cumbersome it is to change the oil, you know, right. you know, until the car breaks down on the side of the road. So you always have to give new website owners a little bit of the benefit of the doubt that they don't really understand. So you have to educate them and you have to sort of handhold them and they might go away after the project is live and come back to you. So you have to keep that in mind versus website owners who already have an existing website kind of understand the task of maintaining and updating the site themselves. Well, I think what's, what's really nice about that is before you require anything from them, you prove yourself, right? So you're going to prove yourself throughout this project. And then if, if they're so happy that they want to hire you again, uh, well then, okay, we'll be glad to continue working with you, but this is how it's going to work from here on, right? Yes. And that's not a surprise. So that conversation is there from the very beginning, from the initial phone call we have through the project at the end of the website launch, they are very clear that moving forward, we have a website care plan. Mm -hmm. And so uh, another one that's come up a lot in the group is charging people monthly versus annually or, you know, mm -hmm. every six months or however it may be. I had a couple of clients in the very beginning say, hey, can I pay you six months worth? I don't want to write a check every month because some clients are weird and still write checks, <laughs> which blows my mind. Um, <laughs> and the fax but, machines. Right, right. Their no. checks seem to always get lost in the mail, which is just weird. Um, yes. <laughs> but uh, I've had some clients do that. And I actually have taken everybody off of any, uh, any plan longer than a month. And in your course, you talk about this a little bit. So I want to see, uh, see what your advice is on this. Well, from a technical, like from a accounting standpoint, from bookkeeping standpoint, when we take a look at a fixed uh, product because care plan is actually this kind of weird mesh between a service and a product. I really like to think of it as a product that just has like service elements inside of it because it's a really fixed scope of work and we shouldn't really be customizing and changing that for our clients. So when we take a look at that, we kind of come up with a price that makes this profitable for us based on the, the time that we factored in and, you know, all of these different pieces to, to come up with this number. Part of that money saving time is not doing accounting or bookkeeping and following up with checks and sending invoices and doing all of that, right? Because that is extra time. I mean, we take a look at how we 
we buy software just to s save us like two clicks, right? So, because <laughs> right. we're Thanks, like, two Sumo. clicks add up to save me <laughs> one hour. Um, and it's the so, same kind of thing. So we have to note that if our client is asking for an exception to our process in any form or fashion, it's going to be more time on our end in, in some way, uh, you know, checks being one of them. Um, so that's one reason why monthly billing with a credit card is always the preferred option. I have always welcomed credit card fees. I love credit card fees. I have people pay with credit cards all the time because let's be honest and let's be very clear. Clients will pay more if they pay with a credit card. You know, they feel a little bit com more comfortable being able to put it on a credit card. I'm not encouraging credit card debt, but I'm just saying. So I've always been willing to accept the credit card fees, knowing that it makes it actually easier for my client in the end sometimes. Now, there are definite clients that prefer ACH, you know, like uh, debit um, and those types of things. And you can actually do that now. There are great companies that allow you to do recurring monthly payments with um, ACH, you know, taking that automatic debit out of your client's account. So there is that option, but monthly is preferred for that particular reason, not chasing and, you know, and, and, and managing time. It's also really easy to communicate to your client that time doesn't roll over. Uh, that's included that this package is a monthly product, not an annual product. So if you're selling an annual product, then maybe you should charge annually. If you're selling a monthly product, you should probably bill monthly. I mean, it gets really across that they can't come back and say, oh, I haven't, used six hours of my 12 hours that you've given me, you know, and I want you to do this. So it kind of communicates the product really easily. The other thing is a funny, fun word we like to call churn. So churn is cancellations and people tend to cancel more frequently when they are confronted with a purchase decision. And when you have monthly billing, they're rarely confronted with a purchasing decision. When you do annual billing, they're taking a look at it and they're going, hmm, do we really need this $2,400 expense? You know, that's why uh, I saw a couple posts on the Facebook universe in January of people canceling because that tends to be either in December or in January, a time or even around tax season, a time when people are kind of looking at their expenses and saying, you know, do we really need this? So annually kind of brings that up more to the front and center of them saying, you know, I'm not sure this is something that we, we want to continue doing rather and if it's they're having monthly. to make a bigger commitment, like time-wise yeah. financial, everything. Yes. Right. Exactly. There's definitely, so. definitely more, uh, more of a chance of like sticker shock that way too. Um, and you know, if it's, if it's just 75, 110, however much, you know, a care plan is per month, it just, for the most part in my, uh, in my experience from my clients, it just becomes another bill. It's just one more thing that they're, they're paying and it's a, it is, it's a lot easier to chew. And it comes, it becomes tied into the performance of their website. I think, you know, the idea of that their website is running well and it's hosted and they're paying you this fee and it all kind of, kind of comes under this like, um, service that they've come to expect now the fact that they own a website, this is just part of the cost of owning a website. And to be honest, we're not pulling the wool over their eyes. That is the cost of owning a website yeah. nowadays. You know, like when we were all building HTML, CSS back in 2006, you know, and uploading our little static files, how much did it cost when they wanted to change a heading? Like we had to pull down the file and then change the heading on all the different pages. Like it was a lot of time. And so, although we didn't have the issues of packing very as much as we do now, um, keeping a website updated and stuff, certainly they have a better platform for this, but they need this in order for their site to perform um, well and be secure. So we're not selling them anything that they don't need. Yeah. I mean, it's all the things we're doing to our own websites. Mm -hmm. I mean, we That's would, right. we would, we would not go update the plugins on our own website. Right. So, uh, they need the same thing done as well. Um, so uh, another one here is client touch points. And one thing that's really cool going through this course is there's lots of resources you can download. Most of them are like Google docs. Uh, a lot of things that I love, which are scripts like that you can go through and kind of tweak to your own voice and then send out those save me a ton of time. Uh, and I really like all those resources in here. And, and one that you have in here is these client touch point scripts. And it's kind of uh, some more, 
I don't, I don't know if unique's the right, I don't know if we can use unique <laughs> and script in the same, same sentence, but instead of just a monthly report of, Hey, 25 plugins got updated and we blocked this many attacks. It's, yeah. it's more in individualized messages to them, uh, which is something I started doing immediately after I watched this lesson. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about, uh, what you think about client communications that for clients that mm -hmm. are on a care plan, how you should be communicating with them and how you came up with these touch points. You know, all real life examples. Um, <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I think the issue I see a lot of times in Facebook posts is that um, web pros are kind of talking negatively about their clients as if they're stupid, they don't understand. And, and I think, you know, we all have, we all speak a different language. We all see things a different way than our clients do. And we're all really lucky when we do get a tech savvy client and it makes things a lot easier, but for the most part, they don't understand what we do and, and nor should we expect them to. Um, and we do have to dumb a lot of stuff down in order to easily communicate it. So sometimes web pros don't reach out because they don't want to confuse them or they don't want to give them any like unnecessary worry or, or just clutter their inbox of something they don't even want to know. Um, I, I, I learned about touch points because we were selling our house um, and buying a house and selling a house. And I was just really enamored with the real estate market <laughs> and how they get on this bandwagon of touch points. And, um, you know, real estate agents know that there are a lot of real estate agents. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and if they, if they're not, if they're not the top of mind, one, you're going to go with somebody else, you know, to sell or buy a house. And so they have lots of these like really fun little things. They send magazines, postcards, we've got cutting boards, we have specialty knives. We have like all of these crazy, really neat, um, gifts from real estate agents. Um, we have a few of them as friends. We have things that go in the fridge and whatever. And, and I thought, you know, they're right. Like that is keeping them top of mind. I can't stop seeing their face every time I look at the cutting board. And they love their face <laughs> on stuff too. <laughs> exactly. So I was like, well, I can dumb this down a little bit. And cause the whole philosophy behind it is, is, is exactly that just getting in front of your client. So getting in front of them and you, maybe they aren't reading the monthly report that you're sending out. You know, there are ways to kind of know if they are reading it or not. You can track the email, depending on the so software that you send it from, you can see if they opened it. So that's always helpful. And that's sort of the main touch point, obviously sending them that monthly report of what you've done, but certainly there's little emails that you can send or your staff can send in my case that um, remind them that you're doing something that uh, whatever you've done is something that they would have had to do <laughs> if you hadn't done it. So, um, you know, so those, there's those little things you had mentioned when you sent your mm -hmm. clients. Which yeah. Yeah. So I, I, as soon as I saw this, it was like a light went off. So I, I don't like sending out monthly reports. I think it's a waste of my time and my particular clients aren't reading them. So, uh, I've just decided it's my business and I get to do what I want. So I don't send them, <laughs> um, <clears throat> which is the best part about owning your own business. Uh, but what I am afraid of is not getting in front of them enough um, and, and making sure I'm cultivating that relationship. I have some clients I speak with every single day because that's the way we are. Um, and I have some clients that I could go six months and never hear a word from and they're perfectly happy, yes. uh, but that's mm -hmm. probably not the best idea. So um, we've all kind of noticed in the groups that our Elementor forms started getting a lot of spam through them recently. Uh, so I went through and implemented reCAPTCHA 3 on all the forms and didn't think a whole lot of it other than I want to stop all this spam. I'm like, I'm doing all this work and they don't even know it's happening. So it was a perfect time for this touch point. And I sent a really friendly, happy, just wanted to let you know, keeping you in the loop type email. It said, I know you've, you've seen more spam come through your form. This is something I, I've reached out to other developers. It's kind of happening all around. I put some things into place that are going to help slow that down. Let me know if you notice a drop in that or if I can do anything else for you and just send off the email. I got so many tons of good responses, just people thanking me for something that I was going to do just completely quietly and not say a word about because I knew that's what needed to be done, right? Um, so yes, since then, I've been like any opportunity to do that, I'm doing it. Yeah, you're, like, you're like, and I did this and I thought of you today. No, um, um, <laughs> but what's funny about that is I certainly have if so whenever someone, um, a client of mine wants us to do something on the site that would result in like a project, I tag it in Gmail as potential project. 
I have so many of my touch point emails that are flagged potential project because just reaching out to them made them think, you know, I do want to do that thing on the website. Mm -hmm. that I, I've know. been meaning to write you. I've been yes, meaning to exactly. How many times have we gotten that? <laughs> so those are always great because that is sort of my philosophy around care plans is really you should never really have to worry about getting um, new projects that your care plan clients should really serve as your project work because every two or three years, someone's going to want a project re website redesign or they have a new piece of their business or need a new website or, you know, want to grow in a certain way. So really your care plan client should be that source of, of uh, project revenue. If, if you're and, and referrals. I mean, that's mm -hmm. definitely oh, the people I get the most referrals, referrals from. Yep. You know? Yeah. And I was telling you, we had in, in the agency portion of my life, because I have many different lives. <laughs> Super mom is one of them, in case you're wondering. Um, it, our January closed more project work than our entire 2019. Which is crazy. Yeah. It was insane. And it was all referrals. I mean, it was all referrals. So, so you're Scrooge McDuck and rolling around in some, some major <laughs> cash right now. Yeah, well, it's about 50% of that with the deposit. <laughs> right. so. All right. All right. We're getting, we're getting close to running out of time here. I, I want to go over a couple of things here in the course. Uh, you know, like Christina said, there's, there's really five courses. You can buy the whole thing as a bundle, which is what I'd recommend because they're all certainly worth it. But there's uh, crafting the care plan product, uh, agency processes for care plans, automation for care plans, hiring your support team and selling the website care plan. So tell us a little bit about like, who is your target market for these courses? Who are these best suited for? So uh, I would say anyone who has been, uh, who has website clients that have care plans or not have care plans. So I've had people come through that have had care plans for a long time. I've had people I have known for years that I have taught before in webinars and business programs come through the training because I think everyone's always looking to tweak and adjust these little pieces. Like even you who are very well experienced in your agency could find value in that. So we kind of see the gamut of people who have never put website care plans into place and the people who have care plans, but know they need to tweak some things. And certainly both of those types get something out of it. Um, I always find if um, certainly if you don't, if you don't have any website clients and you're just looking like, how do I get new clients? There's better training for that. For, so you do need to be in the space. You do need to be actively working with clients in order to benefit because this kind of goes and takes that client list that you have, whether it's your past clients or future clients and gets everything sort of set up and in place. So you need to be kind of going a little bit with, with your freelance work or with your agency work. Um, and then people who have been in it for, for years have find, found value. So it's, it's, it's all over the place, but uh, that's why I broke it up. So if someone knows that they have the product is, is solid and they have their processes, but they, they need a team, they can just take that piece or they want to kind of pour a little gasoline on the fire in terms of sales. What is Christina doing right <laughs> that I'm not doing? Um, it, it, they can just take that or I love our, I'm obsessed with our automation piece. I, you know, I coupled it with, with processes because you do need to know our agency processes in order to understand automation. It, they go hand in hand. Yeah. Kind of so dependent have, on one another. They're dependent. Exactly. So you can't really take automation by itself. You have to get the processes and automation. You can certainly buy processes and then add on automation um, as an additional course later down the road. Um, but I love automation because I love the way that Zapier talks to Airtable. So I am the Airtable fanatic. Uh, and I don't consider myself like, I don't want to say it like that, but I, I consider myself a smart person, but I don't consider <laughs> myself really rather like Cody. I mean, I coded for a long time, but when I got into Airtable and I started learning formulas and roll-ups and lookup fields and all that, I mean, I was like, we can use this and yeah. soar. So basically I run our website care plans through Airtable in this beautiful, masterful dance <laughs> <laughs> between <laughs> client plans and overtime and notifications and stuff. So automation is such my, like my geek out. It's like geek out lessons for those that are, that are really interested in maybe turning the 
the heat up on their care plan processes. <laughs> Did I make that, that sound cool? No, See it how sounds you awesome. Make website care plan sound really cool. It, yeah. it sounds awesome. Uh, I will <laughs> say I, I love Airtable too. It's uh, I feel like I can solve almost all the world's problems with the right Airtable base. <laughs> it's true. Like, Kyle will, uh, will give me a call and he'll be like, I got to share my screen. I got to show you what I just did. <laughs> it's so true. And my Christmas was a success because of Airtable. Everybody was in Airtable, my Christmas card list, the presents that were purchased <laughs> and the pricing of the presents. And I just showed my husband and said, is this an acceptable budget for our Christmas presents? And he's like, actually, I'd like to reduce that budget by $200. I was like, okay, let me go through my list. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it. I know. That's awesome. Well, uh, everybody can go check out uh, all the courses and the options for all that. If you go to the adminbar.com forward slash WPCM for WP Care Market. Uh, tried to make that nice and easy. I will say we're recording this on February 4th. Uh, we're going to try to turn this around really quickly. So hopefully like February 5th, there's going to be an email going out to all the WOM customers uh, because Christina has done something super kind for them. Um, so if you're a WOM customer, you'll definitely want to check that out because there's something fancy in there for you if you're interested in any of Christina's courses. And right now until I think Valentine's is going to tell Day. us about uh, you actually have a sale going on right now too if people want to capitalize quickly so why don't you tell us about that I yes and before I cap off with that I do want to say like I'm I'm like the listeners in the sense here like oh this is a salesy salesy pitch I'm always willing to help anyone whether they're a student or not and we do have a Facebook group and just you know I I want to help people and, and dump value and if it's valuable enough then maybe you want to come into the training so if, you can always check out um, the website to find the Facebook group, but we are, uh, putting out a sale for Valentine's day for the month of website love, nice. because you know, when we <laughs> offer website care plans, we do it right. We're loving our clients and we're loving their websites. So it's month of website love. So there is 25% off the courses right now until Valentine's day or through Valentine's day. And then the bundle, which is already like a massive discount on all the courses together is 15% off. So, um, and that's just to spread the website love. There you go. Have and if, if your uh, spouse or significant other is asking you what you want for <laughs> Valentine's Day, it makes a pretty good little present. I have thought about the uh, gift this option on the courses. That's not a bad idea. Loves, hey. Everybody loves it. Instead of roses, don't right, buy those yeah. expensive roses. I'm just going to buy my wife a care plan course. She'll be so excited. <laughs> She would hate me forever. I'd be in big trouble. Yeah, probably. That. Although my favorite uh, Valentine's Day, I got new towels and I was really happy about that. I, I, so. I asked for socks oh, for Christmas. I, I was excited about socks. And, yes. Know. My husband also asked for socks for Christmas. I got. I was like actually this. really disappointed because I didn't get any this year. Man. And you wanted socks. I oh, did. now I know what to send both of you. Yeah. You guys like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out what kind of socks you there like. You there you go. I got nice. you. I got you. Don't worry. Awesome. Well, like Christina said, I, I don't think this group is ever all about the sales pitch. I think everybody in here is about trying to help each other out and stuff. Uh, our, our biggest deal is we don't go on here and promote something or ask somebody to come on here and promote something they're selling unless we've partaken in it and enjoy it and can endorse it wholeheartedly. This is definitely something that falls in that category. Uh, when me and Christina first started talking, we got introduced through Jason Resnick. Uh, we started talking she offered to uh, let me check out the courses, which I did. Uh, I was blown away by it. So I definitely think it's something you should, you should take a look at. And if not, go join the group and pick her brain. I've learned a ton of stuff in there too. Uh, so, you know, it's a win-win. We all have something to learn for sure. Yeah, all right, Mr. That, Matt. Kyle, too. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks so much for those kind words. <laughs> Absolutely. Matt, did I forget anything that we needed to cover in this? I think that uh, we covered everything pretty well. We rambled long enough. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Christina, for coming on here. And Christina is part of the admin bar group. So if you have questions, tag her in there. Uh, I did that earlier, uh, earlier today, in fact. So you can tag her in there. She'll come in and answer when she gets a chance. So thanks so much for joining us today for this, Christina. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Kyle and Matt. This was really awesome. I, and thank you for your time. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, All right, guys, as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us in return is to share the content, subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channels and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes a little time and it greatly helps support the show. That's all for now. We'll catch you all inside the group. Bye-bye. See ya.